Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to the studio. Well, this is the media studio. A lot of people are actually curious as to what our art studio is going to look like now that we have moved. If you guys have been following us for a while, you know that our old studio looked like this. That's pretty much how our YouTube videos are. It's me in front of the camera going, blah, 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 and clean the background going, <laughs> and our new studio, unfortunately, looks like this. It's like you're in a horror movie. It is like that. <laughs> yeah, plumbing issues suck. Uh, but let's not talk about that in this video. This video is based on a question that we got from one of our awesome rogues because they're moving their studio to their home and because we have always been big advocates of having your creative space at home i'm going to give you guys some tips on what i think about when putting a studio together and then we're going to visit a few studios because that's really awesome Ooh. <laughs> i love how we both <laughs> Dorks. <laughs> now the truth is that most of you guys know exactly what it is that you need for your own creative style So essentially a video like this is almost worthless, but no matter what we're gonna do this anyway The first tip is protecting the space Especially if you are renting you want to make sure that you protect the space that you're in from any like rogue paint or shrapnel or art stuff in our old studio, we were renting the space and it was a very small apartment. So we took our living room and essentially covered it in plastic. So everything behind the studio walls that you would see in the videos, that was covered in plastic. That way the apartment itself was protected and the studio was just a freestanding structure. You could basically take that studio out of there and put it in the middle of a gymnasium and it would stand on its own. A lot of that was stuff that was zip tied and screwed together. Uh, you know, I built basically every structure in the studio because I wanted it all to be custom. Yeah, so basically with the hermetically sealed box studio, built that with whatever you had. Yeah, and over the years, as we got more and more art materials, more shelves, more more of that wall started getting built in there. It was pretty epic. I mean, eventually we would sort of kick ourselves for it because it was a beast to take apart. Well, we moved, yeah. Well, but, we uh, moved, it took, it took almost a month just to take the studio yeah. apart. Going into our new studio, we don't have to worry so much about protecting the space because, you know, it's our space. So we're gonna get paint everywhere. I am, however, planning on building all the things that I need because I want custom things to fit in the space. That's not something that you have to do, but it's something that I like doing because I like, I like my stuff to be custom. The second thing that I think about is protecting your creative space from the environment that's around it. And what I mean by that is leaks, noisy neighbors, pest that may get in, and uh, the occasional family member that might want to like get into your space and mess with things. You may have to set up booby traps for family members, neighbors, or the occasional person that works with you in your studio and comes over to your side to steal your brushes. What? Anytime you enter my side of the studio, pretty much one of my brushes is gonna disappear. In all fairness, I only take the old ones. The old ones are the good ones. Third thing that I do is making sure that the studio is adaptable. So one of the ways that I do this is making sure that just about everything is on casters. You're able to move them around and reshape the studio at will. This really came in handy for me a few times when I had to work on really big projects that just wouldn't typically fit in the studio unless I was able to move things out of the way and reconfigure things around. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is that your studio is gonna evolve. Like, it doesn't necessarily Necessarily stay the same all the time. You're gonna get new art materials, the more tools that you get, the more easels that you get, the more stuff that you build. You're gonna to wanna to be able to give yourself the opportunity to just kind of reconfigure the studio and move it around however it is that suits you the best for whatever project you're working on. Yes, adaptability is awesome, not just as it evolves over time, but if you're anything like Rafi and you have like one billion things happening in the studio, sometimes you're like, I need the center of the floor clear for my work. I need the right side of the studio empty for my work. Why do I sound like an angry Frenchman? I need you to get out of my studios. Why are you taking over my studio? 
I mean, to be <laughs> fair, you are kind of taking over my studio all the time. Ooh. Also, the organization of your studio, and that's where the shelves come in. Some people like using drawers. I don't typically use drawers because uh, for me, out of sight, out of mind. So like, I always like having things sitting on shelves where I could see them. You wanna organize your studio to suit your particular type of madness. In my case, I like to call it controlled chaos. Some of you guys out there are gonna be like Klee, really neat, really organized. And some of you out there are going to be misunderstood neat like me. <laughs> Misunderstood neat. I like that term. Yeah, because we're not all like you, where like two things get out of place and you're like, oh, <laughs> I have to reset. The fifth thing that I focus on is lighting. Lighting is so important. It's important for the atmosphere that you're creating. It's important for the artwork that you're working on, everything being well illuminated. It's also important for videos, photos, uh, things like that where you want to share your studio out there. And before you say, Rafi, I'm not gonna do any photo or video ops because I am shy. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You might decide at one point that you're gonna do some videos or you want to take pictures of your art and share them out there. You don't know, so you might as well prepare now with good lighting. And the final thing is just create a space. Just create a space for yourself where you're going to be able to create some art, work on the things that you want to, have your creative area, something that you set up that no one else is allowed to touch, even if it is a corner of a room. When I first started putting my artwork out there, basically I started in a hoarder's garage on the small corner of a table in there, the only space where there wasn't anything just overlapping all over the place, that's where I set up my easel and my art supplies were in a tiny little old suitcase that I would open up every day and get out there and start working. You did work in a little decrepit garage corner and uh, I literally worked wherever there was a surface yeah, I think at, work. I think at one point your desk was an end table. Yeah. At another point, I was working in a dirt pit. <laughs> Do you remember that? Like it was like a, a flower bed or one of those box bed things. Oh, and like yeah. it had one surface on it. I was like, oh, I can put paintings there. And that's where like that was my studio for a while was a dirt pit. Dirt pit studios. <laughs> Over the years, the studio evolved and my creative spaces started to become a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's pretty much how it goes. Sometimes you move to a place and you have more room. Sometimes you have less room. Sometimes situations in life uh, take over the creative space that you have. The question isn't, do you not have a space to create? The question is, why are you not creating a space? The other thing is, and thinking about the fact that we are going to be building our studio. I mean, the plumbing issue is not going to last forever, but where do you find inspiration as far as putting your studio together? What is it that inspires you? If you're having trouble coming up with ideas for your creative space, you look at what other artists have done. With the eminent construction of our studio just around the corner, we've been inspired, greatly inspired, by a lot of the studio pictures that our rogues have posted on Patreon, on our Discord page. In fact, I've been so inspired by them that I wanna share some of those with you and see if you guys get inspired by these amazing creative spaces. I always find inspiration in organized chaos. I find inspiration in nice, clean lines, especially when you have a brand new studio. I also love looking at the lived-in spaces of creatives and the creative things that they do, whether it's create a small nook, organizing your space and making it feel cozy and lived-in. I love seeing the way that people utilize whatever space it is that they have, whether it's small or large, and the way that they organize their thoughts they organize their materials. They do fun things in order to avoid spilling. I love seeing people grow their space as they grow or utilize a corner of a kitchen and create a massive studio. It's the ingenuity, the tools, everything that makes your studio what it is, but mostly it's your creative chaos, your mess. I mean, some people will see it as a mess, but it is most definitely artistic, creative chaos. I love seeing the way that people utilize sheds, building shelves, or maybe it's a small corner in a 400 square foot apartment. 
Maybe it's a new bright studio where you could fit all your equipment. Maybe you had to temporarily downgrade to an end table. Or maybe you have an amazing amount of chaos and creativity. Maybe you have a clean, beautiful studio. Or maybe you have something that is extremely unique. I love seeing the way that people organize their creativity and build their creative spaces into something absolutely unique. At the end of the day, no matter how big, how small, how elaborate, or whatever materials you have going on in there, it doesn't matter what the space looks like. All that matters is that you have a place where you can work on your art. You have a place where you could get away and just work on the stuff that you want to work on. Rule number one is making sure that you have the ability to block out everyone else and everything else that is going on that you are able to just focus on that space and that that space is yours. Hands off, no one else is allowed to go into your creative space that is your creative space with your stuff set up in a way where all you have to do is walk up and get started. I don't know why I couldn't say. Oh, yes! I win! Rude! Woo! Woo! Whatever, you win. Now you can have this brush. You win boogers on my paint. Brush. Yep. And that's ultimately what's most important when it comes to your creative space. You don't want anybody getting in there and getting all up on your stuff. You just don't want that. Unless that someone is a cat. Because we all know that cats do whatever they want. And that's it, you guys. That's all we have. Because honestly, we don't have our art studio up and running yet. So once we do, we'll give you a proper tour of the studio. And in fact, there may be some videos out there about building the studio on our adventure channel. Are you excited about getting our studio up and running? Yes, I'm a mixture of a bunch of emotions, but excitement is one of them. I just think of the studio getting up and running. I've decided I'm not going to think about plumbing anymore. Yeah, ever, that's ever a good again. plan. Yeah. Just remember, start where you are because no matter what, it's going to evolve. It's going to keep growing and, and it's just going to keep changing. And I'm curious to know if you guys have any tips or best practices when it comes to putting an art studio together. Go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. I'm about to end this video. Do you want to say goodbye to our peeps out there? It's the weekend. Of it's course I do. Have an excellent weekend, everybody, and good day. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Have an amazing weekend, you guys. You guys are awesome. Adios.